Pacific Coast Munchies. Today we're gonna make some amazing homemade English muffins. You're gonna start by warming up about a third cup of water and add two teaspoons of active dry yeast. Then two tablespoons of plain white sugar. Throw that in and give it a good mix until everything's thoroughly combined. Let rest for about 10 minutes, and if your yeast is nice and active, it should look something like this. You'll then want to pour that mixture into your mixing bowl, and grab and lightly beat a single egg to add to your mixture. Then you'll add 1 and 3 fourths cup whole milk, or what I prefer is buttermilk. You'll get a way better flavor that way, but if you just have regular milk, that's fine too. You'll accompany that with about a half a tablespoon of salt. You'll want four and a half cups of bread flour. You can use all purpose, but they really don't come out as nice. Definitely grab bread flour if you can. And last but not least, around three tablespoons of softened butter. Mine wasn't quite soft enough. You'll see a chunk or two hanging around in the dough, but don't worry, it won't ruin it or anything. Just make sure your butter's well softened. Then you can start beating it on low while slowly turning up the speed until it comes together into a nice smooth dough. It'll hit this shaggy lumpy stage first, just keep it going. Once it's fully incorporated, it should look like this. Nice, smooth, but still quite wet. You'll want to pour that out onto a floured work surface and get about another half cup of flour ready to work into the dough. I like to sprinkle just a little bit of flour at a time into the dough and just start working it around. It's going to be very messy and very wet and sticky, but eventually it'll start coming together and holding its form and that's what you want to look for, is when you let it rest, it doesn't immediately all sag back down into a blob. It holds its form, but it's still a wetter dough. You'll then throw that in a grease bowl and throw a damp towel over it and put it in the fridge overnight. Then you'll want to grab a baking sheet or two and cover them in cornmeal. Make sure there's a decent layer, it'll really help you in the long run. Then grab your dough, lay it out on a floured surface. I like to elongate it, stretch it out, and cut it into about eight pieces for very large English muffins. You can probably get away with 10 smaller, regular sized English muffins. This next part can be tricky. You're gonna wanna work quick with some floured fingers. You're gonna grab all the corners of your piece and fold them into itself. Same like you would doing pizza dough or anything like that. You're just gonna keep folding all the edges into itself, turn it over, and form it into a ball. This can be very sticky and tricky, but just keep twisting and turning the bottom into itself until it looks like a sphere and you're good. Throw it on the well cornmeal trays and then continue to do that with all the rest of your dough until they're done. Even if the first couple don't look too round, it doesn't matter, they're gonna taste delicious. Once you've got those all trayed up, you're gonna take some of that extra cornmeal and give a generous dusting to all the tops of your muffins. You'll then wanna lightly cover your trays with some slightly oiled, spray oil, vegetable oil, whatever works, saran wrap, and just lightly cover the trays and set them aside for about an hour to proof. While those are proofing, you can get your griddle set up. You can also use cast iron or even a regular pan if you really need to, or even a cast iron griddle. The more space just lets you cook them all at once instead of one by one. I set mine to about three, 350. Give it a slight spray of some vegetable oil, and then gently place all of your English muffins on the griddle. The more cornmeal you used, the easier this will be.
While these start to cook, you're going to want to watch the ring around the bottom of the English muffin. The bottom will start to turn less shiny and more of a matte color. You'll be able to tell it's cooking and you'll slowly start seeing it rise. After about 8 minutes or so, you can flip it as long as it's nice and golden on the bottom. And then do the same with the other side. Once you have both sides nice crispy golden, you're going to want to put those aside on a tray and preheat your oven to around 350 and let them cook in the oven for about another 5 minutes if you have smaller English muffins and about 10 minutes if you're using larger ones like I did. And after that, you'll have some amazing homemade English muffins that taste 20 times better than anything you'll find at the store. They're great with just some butter and jam. They also make some really killer breakfast sandwiches. I hope you enjoy. Let me know in the comments what you make these for. Like if you like English muffins and subscribe for more recipes.